three two five. Mm. Three two half. Go. Gonna be a lot of crumbs everywhere. Mm. Can you believe? I'm sorry for the crunching. Can you believe? Can you? The, the kids don't like the cookies. No. I think they're the best cookies ever. Will doesn't like the raisins. And Zora says they're too hard. That's just racist. I should make them more often. <laughs> yeah. Finally something that, <laughs> that we'll be able to have. You know, just the kids won't eat it all. Well, there we go. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, check. All systems working. <laughs> All systems check. <laughs> Have you become a robot? All systems working. Ready to blast off. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> what was that series? Buck, Roger, Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Do 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 do. I love that 25th century. It was great. Beep 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 beep. It's like this. Yeah. You're okay. These cookies do weird things to your brain. Hmm. Yeah. And your teeth. That cartoon just looks like Lord of the Rings in a kind of strange way, anyway. Hmm. Mm. It's a good cartoon. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, counting down. Are you ready? Five, only if you take a bite of this. I'm no. No. No, I'm not going to take a bite, I'm just going to press record. Okay. I like the way that... It sort of counts down. <laughs> hmm? It sort of counts down on Facebook. It's sort of, yeah. Sort of. It goes three, and then waits a couple of seconds, and then goes two, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like when my mum used to count to three when we were supposed to do something, right? <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> uh, you lose. One, two, three. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the snowman has brought the snow. Which snowman? It's it's the song. When the snowman brings the snow. Do 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 do. Put a great big I thought it was the other way around. Somebody's face. I what? thought the uh, snow brought the snowman. Um. Yes. Well, you know, all pop songs are culturally weird, backwards, <laughs> <laughs> or irrelevant. Or just messed up in general, which is, which is, you know, why they do what they do, I suppose. Oh well, well. it's a nice metaphor, anyhow. Yeah, the snow. It's been snowing again today. <laughs> that, That's great. Is that a metaphor? I don't think it's the actually. The snowman brings the snow. Yeah, obviously, because it's not a real situation. It's a metaphor, which means it's snowing. What's this? What's this about? Why do you keep touching your head? What's this about? I mean, look at that. What's that? What is this? It's Why hair. does it keep standing up? It's hair. Why it's does what it hair keep defying that's gravity? What he, that's down. what hair does. Hair Look stands at that. up. What? <laughs> can you do one at the other side as well? Dude, we and then you have these two horns. <laughs> you could hook your coat on it. You know, you, you, it probably you, you, wouldn't go down. You could try. I wouldn't stand in one place for too long just in case someone tried to do that. <laughs> It's just, and you can't do anything about it. I mean, you know, I try to tuck it back or something, but... Well, you can. You can be like me. Well... I don't have that problem. Will you cut my hair? With a lawnmower, perhaps. Yeah. I have a really nice shape of a skull, so I would actually look... <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the shape of a skull? <laughs> wow! That's really nice. Yeah, I know. It's not one of those features that uh, as, as men point at. As, as, a, <laughs> as, opposed <coughs> to, as opposed to what? Oh my god, what an ugly skull. You know, like, <laughs> oh, oh, look at that chick. Check out her skull. <laughs> Forehead like a rhino. Look how she moves that head. <laughs> Mouth like an alligator. 
<laughs> Welcome to the practical parenting, everybody. We're, no, we're normal. Welcome to the practical parenting podcast. This is. Um, I just said we're normal. <laughs> Welcome to the practical parenting podcast. <laughs> Nobody's welcome, welcome. Me. Sit down, have a glass of wine, enjoy. Mm, right, I've just gone Romanian Indian. Right, um, it's a very strange combination, but I'm pretty sure it exists. It 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 would make a great horror. I mean, film. anything exists. If Slovak Scottish or can musical. exist, then anything can exist. Sorry, I said I said if Slovak and Scottish can exist as a combination, then anything. Can that would exist. be like slottish. <laughs> or Skobak. <laughs> Slottish, <laughs> slottish is better. <laughs> both, both of them are terrible. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh my god. So Romanian and Indian would be In what? Rindian? Reindeerian. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Christmas themed. It's December. And we're up to the... We're in the 60s. And I don't mean um, some kind of weird temperature gauge thing. <laughs> I mean in numbers of... Um, podcasts oh, that we have right. uh, that we have produced wow. we have we have uh, we have banged on and hammered out 60 uh, podcasts which is uh, which is a lot which it comes to about 80 hours of uh, oh parenting material oh my god I'm, so, I'm sorry which, guys which, what, what are you apologizing <laughs> I apologize for this <laughs> <laughs> just We'd like 80 hours of your life <laughs> well it's you know it, it more useful than Netflix, right? Hopefully. No, more educational than Netflix. Hopefully. Okay. Um, more. Um, I, don't know, I don't know. It's going to have more something than something, but I don't know what the something is. More aesthetic. What, what the fuck was that? <laughs> You're that trying to be a spider. Or are you making a web? What was he trying to do? It's pointing at your beautiful face. That that was pointing. Mm -hmm. I think when you point, your hands remain stationary. <laughs> you don't do circles. That is boring pointing. I do dynamic pointing. Oh, dynamic pointing. Remember to do anything. Ev ev <laughs> Sorry. God. <laughs> Remember to do everything in a very dynamic way. Yes. You That's it. Point. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, look. So. This. So I checked yeah. one of the links that you, when you provided want to, when in you want, the... Um, when, you want, when you want to talk to me, you hit me before you say anything. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't. <laughs> it's not like, can I talk to you? It's like, bang! <laughs> By the way... Catches your attention. Yeah, I do that because... <laughs> <laughs> my, my brain goes into protection mode, like... like like what should I well, do? Well, it's like that. It's like that neurolinguistics that you said. You know, I want to. I'm trying to make a point here. So, listen. Yeah, that was subtle. I was, che I was is checking. Subtle, yeah. But Slovaks don't understand subtle, so no. that's okay. Thank you. Right. I was checking, um, checking out the links that you know the newsletter that we that we sent out on Saturday. Was it the parenting dun, dun, podcast dun, 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 newsletter? Dun, 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 uh, dun. Had some links in it to interesting resources, you know, articles, videos, and so on. And one of, of course, those of resources was, um, was like top five, I don't think there was a number, it was just videos that women should watch, something like that, TED Talks that women should watch. Yeah, but you know why I put that there? Because you wanted me to watch it? <laughs> no, no, I put it there as a counterbalance to the... Uh, to the, to, the, to the link that was before it, which was a male perspective on principles. And so I thought I'd put in a female perspective again. as well, because, um, you know, not many... It, it's one of those things where women don't read articles written by men mm -hmm. that much, and men don't read articles written by women that much. Well, they <laughs> it's, 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 it's a lot about what you can relate to. Did you notice I didn't make huge generalizations? I mean, there? it's hard. Yeah, I've noticed. Did, did that was no great. Did you notice that? <laughs> that was great. That much makes all the difference. Welcome to the personal improvement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a lot about what you can relate to, right? I mean, when somebody talks about the male perspective, it is interesting for a woman, but you can't really relate to it very much because you're obviously not a male. So, Excuse and, me? And, and you've got a different perspective. I'm not a male. Well, you are, I'm not. So, 
<laughs> so that by that you you meant me? Yes, the <laughs> other way around. <laughs> yes. Uh, the point that I was trying to make is uh, that I watched the video by this blonde woman. <laughs> Can't remember her name. It's tall. I mean, you find it there, okay? You find it in our parenting podcast newsletter that you should check out and you should subscribe. Top 10. S- subscribe top to. 10, top 10 TED Talks. Top 10 TED Talks for women. And um, one of these TED Talks is a lady talking about uh, the body are they all, language. Are they all women talking? Yes. So that's really funny. <laughs> that's, no, um... I, I just just is ironic that the the best things for women are by women, of were, course. Provided by women, best best things period are by women. Bah ha ha ha! If you have noticed that massive generalization that I just made. Okay, back to the point. So this lady, very tall, skinny, blonde hair, uh, talks about really ugly then. Body language. Shut up. Body language and how it can shape your mind. And in the TED talk, she uh, states that according to uh, the research that they made, um, the poses that you make with your body, your body language, change the hormones in your body. Uh, and she, they, they took general poses of power, powerful poses, that, you know, like which are generally, you know, arms spread out like that or like that or, you know, open chest, just open body, uh, you know, like feet on the table, basically self-confident, powerful poses. And they measured, they let people to practice it for two minutes and then they measured their hormone levels and they did the same thing for weak submissive poses, right? Like closed down, hunched, you know, made smaller, legs crossed, arms crossed, or apparently the, 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 the most submissive and, and weakest pose is one that I practice very often actually, and that is holding your neck. Because a bit, uh, you're literally protecting yourself from whatever is happening by holding your neck, right? So, um, so they measured the hormone levels of the people who practice those poses, and then they compared, right? Okay. And How are you? they uh, obviously measured their hormone levels before practicing those poses as well to have something to compare it to. Um, and they discovered that the people who for only for two minutes would stand in powerful poses had much higher testosterone levels and much lower cortisol levels, which means, uh, when you translate that, uh, testosterone apparently is the hormone of dominance or a power, right? So more powerful powerful you are the more testosterone you have the less cortisol you have cortisol is the hormone that is released in stressful situations when you have stress so basically when you have high testosterone and low cortisol it means that you are feeling powerful and you have good ability to handle stress right and they found out that just by changing your physical posture you fool your brain and change your hormonal levels. And they therefore suggested that this can be used, obviously it's short-term effect, but they suggested that this can be used in everyday life situations like difficult meetings, uh, business meetings, job interviews, and so on and so on. You practice your power poses for two minutes before you have a you know, tough, some, where's Babka? Babka will be coming no, tomorrow. That's Wilco. She asked for Wilco. Oh, for Wilco. Wilco. Oh, sorry. Uh, Wilco is. I don't know. He's probably hiding somewhere. You have to go and look for him. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So they said to <laughs> poor Wilco. Yeah. She's gonna be decimated she, she, by a little girl with two lightsabers. Yeah, she wants to fight with him with lightsabers. So. Nothing wrong with that. You know, they also. So they, they suggested that when you do it before difficult situations, what happens is that you are in the difficult situation, you become more self-confident, more powerful and less stressed. And 
then they did a research with job interviews and they found out that objective, you know, third party observants <laughs> always chose uh, the applicants that have practiced powerful poses before and during the interview I've just, rather than I've just picked up rather than the submissive ones submissive ones so that's for mummy thank you the lightsaber for mummy so according to that research um it's a powerful pose the with a lightsaber body language doesn't <coughs> only communicate things <laughs> towards the person that you're communicating with there's a bit of such a lightsaber fight going on in uh, the middle of the podcast absolutely help but also lightsaber to fight. yourself help help did you get that point no no i was saving all the technology and the from all the glasses getting knocked off the table by I the said swinging body lightsaber. language is not only a means of communication mm-hmm. okay go it's n- it's not only a, a means of communication directed to the other person within the dialogue, but it's also a means of communication to directed towards your own brain and towards your own system because you can you can change the actual hormone levels. You can change the actual effectiveness of what you're doing just by doing Oops, that. Sorry, okay. So, um, and I'm saying this because I've noticed that we were both standing like this. So we should be more, you know, if we stay, if we stand more confidently, you know, straight, open, then my pose is extremely confident. So I don't know what you're talking about. Is it? Yes, it is. My my pose is a dominant pose. Right now, I am standing with. Uh, you're closed. Feet. I'm not. This I'm is closed. Um, my arms are across my chest, but this whole thing about oh that that's a closed pose. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 do, it's do, protective. Do, it's extremely protective. It, it, just because someone says that pose is a protective pose does not in any way at all mean that what I'm doing is protective. That's nonsense. That's complete nonsense. Okay. Right. I mean that's like that's like saying that tree over there taught me how to stand straight. I mean, it's ridiculous. So It looks like it. <laughs> no, um, my, 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 my body is, is in the right position. I have, uh, I've done my exercise this morning. I can feel the, the, um, the, the muscles throughout my body and I know that they're, they're all, uh, everything is aligned and correct. Um, well, you do that and I'm going to practice the powerful poses. You just look like a spastic. <laughs> I'm just going to stand like this. You look like <laughs> your arms are going to get tired after five minutes and you'll have to pull them down. <laughs> Good that's, ri- that's, that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking with Christ. Of course there's, I mean, uh, let's, let's not over-examine body language, right? Because um, first of all, body language can be used to fool people into thinking something is something that is not. Um, yes, and, that's, that's, um, that's basically what that whole thing was about. Yeah, like I mean, saying that that my 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 pose is not very open is to misunderstand the pose. Yeah, and to t- to follow somebody else's instruction on that is is then. What about following that, that somebody else's instructions? Don't close. Don't fold your arms. Something. Don't fold your arms. It's negative. But that that that. It's not. That's, it's that's not ridiculous. based. It's not I mean, based on one video that I watched. This is some. This is an information that I have come across again and again and again ever since I was 14 and, and learned that at school. So, um, no, I won't. I did, I did, did that. so it's obviously not just opinion of one person. Look, obviously certain positions require certain poses. Yeah. So, so standing like poses. this either yes. means I've got, ba- I've basically got Three, maybe four <coughs> things I can do mm-hmm. with my with my physical posture here. Yeah. Right? I can put my hands in one of the two sets of pockets that I've got. 
One of the two sets of pockets. Oh, you've got two sets. There. Lucky okay, you. Got, got my hoodie, I don't have hoodie any. pocket. Right? Well, I've got these, but they're really tiny. I that's, a, oh, that, that's a pocket? There's you two pockets. I what, couldn't what, fit what, my what, pinky finger. You can't even put your fingers in there, so yeah, I'm, not, no. I'm not quite sure what that's for. False pockets. You've got False fake pockets. pockets. It's really shit because they keep on coming out like that as well, and then I just look at it idi idiotic. I have to keep putting them back in. That's useful. Yeah, right. and, and you have no idea what it looked like, and neither have you there in the phone. You don't want to see it because <laughs> it does look rather silly. Yes. Anyway, um, so I can put my hands in my pockets. I can put my hands behind my back. Mm -hmm. I can put my hands across my chair. That's basically all I can do, or I can put my you hands... You can stand like this. Oh, it's just it's on the beach. Oh, that's silly. Like that, that's, that's silly. That's leaning on something. So, I mean, to say that any of those poses is is closed, I think it's slightly ridiculous. Obviously, in communication with, with, with people, you're going to open yourself up a little bit more. And obviously, there is something that expresses itself through body language. There is negative communication, but it doesn't always work like that. You can um, uh, you can just have your own way of communication. So, so this body language thing is, is a big generalization. Obviously, there is some negative body language, but I think what it is and what it isn't, you can learn that in 60 seconds and everything else is just... Um, extra ir ir irrelevance basically you, most things you can <coughs> learn in a, most important things you can learn in a short space of time and people tend to drag it out into um, into in, in, into a big topic or subject it's like a lot of books can be a lot of informational based books not stories right mm -hmm. a lot of informational based books can be you, you can take all the important points and put them on one page yeah right? Yeah. Right? Yes, I've read books like that. So, yes, so I mean, the, the basic things about body language they can be learned extremely quickly. And this pose that I have is not in any way uh, uh, closed. Or, or other people might perceive it. Oh, it's confrontational, or it's, it's just a way of picking on something because you can't. It's, uh, for a lot of people, focusing on body language is just because they they've they've got no way to criticize what the person is saying, so they 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 criticize how the person is standing. I don't think anybody was criticizing anything here. You know, I was just pointing out a very interesting video that I saw, and uh, was pointing out that for me, at least, for me, it works that way. Okay. What is body language important? It does make a bit of a difference, but not <coughs> so much of a difference that, it, that, that changing the way you stand is going to change your entire life. It's not going to well. Oh my God! Now you're just exaggerating. Well, look at healthy. I didn't say it's going to change posture, your right? life. I said it's that they have discovered that it has short-term effects on your hormones, and it has short-term effects on how people perceive you. So, I think. Have you ever done an experiment with that? Not yet, because I've only watched a video yesterday. Did you only learn it yesterday? Because I knew that when I was like 15. Seriously. So, so what's your point? I just thought that <laughs> that you would have learned about body language before the age of 32. I learned about body language before the age of 32, but I did not know that the way you stand can affect your hormonal balances in your brain. That's a new information. Yeah, I'm not sure the brain is ever balanced. Because I just, be I, just, I just told you like, like five minutes ago that the first time I came across the information about body language was when I was about 14, so... So I did an experiment on okay. it when I was um, when I was living in London and doing some uh, theatre courses, and I decided that um, I was meeting a new um, theatre group, and I decided that I was going to put myself across, project myself as the most confident person about everything. And and I did, mm -hmm. rather than go in and be sort of neutral, maybe take a step back, not uh, kind of push my ideas or anything. I'd, I'd have a specific opinion on everything and I would be the, the, the first to volunteer to do everything and, and so on. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I did this for one week. I did this. You did. You did you, this every day wait, for wait, one wait. week. You led the group, or you were a part of the group. I was a part of the group. I was okay. a participant in the group. But I decided that I wanted to to see if it was possible to change the group dynamic by okay. being a different person. Mm-hmm. And it was a new group, and the people didn't know me, so mm-hmm. I, they, there was there was no uh, what do you call it prejudgment or yes, expectation. Yes, uh-huh. Or, or expectation there. Yeah. So I went into the group and I became the leader of the group. Yeah. Because I did this. Yeah. And okay, it was crazy. And at the end of the week, mm-hmm. I sat down and I thought, this is insane. This mm-hmm. is not me. I'm not a leader. But I've just gone into this group and convinced this group that I'm the super confident person who knows all these things that I don't know. Mm-hmm. And they're all happy. They're all, they're all happy to follow someone and they have selected me to follow. So mm-hmm. whatever, and they come to me and ask me what, you know, what they, what I think is the right thing for them to do. So, and <laughs> I was like, well, this is just a tiny little social experiment to see if I change myself, how that mm-hmm. changes the environment. Yeah. And um, at the, the end of the week, I was, I was really confused by it because <laughs> it was extremely... Once you set your mind to do it, it was extremely easy to do it. Yeah? Yeah. And the the crazy thing was, it wasn't me. And um, so I was projecting myself as this, you know, this, 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 this kind of alpha male mm-hmm. um, figure to, to lead, lead this, this, this small tribe. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> it, it was interesting. I'm not, I, c- I can't really say too much more about it, but... Um, do you need to pee? Let's. What, what happened? What happened, darling? What happened over there? Oh, quickly! You better go. She's in a bit of a panic about something. You, mm. Jazzy, who's too is. We don't know what she's doing. She's in a bit of a panic about something. I imagine she stood on something and has got something stuck to her foot, probably. Or uh, she's probably got a sticker because there's. She had a hair stuck a hair. to her pajama pants. A hair. And a cookie crumb stuck to the hair. So this oh cookie God. crumb was hanging off off the hair and off her pajama pants leg and she's panicking about it. <laughs> <laughs> things you things she, things you can't predict. Anyway, what you said made a perfect sense and it was actually a point of another one of those TED talks. Cuz I'll tell you I'll tell you one other thing. <coughs> I'll, I'll I'll add in the, the caveat here. Okay. At the end. There was a What's up, Zora? There was... Go and get one. You help yourself, darling. On the... No, on the kitchen bench. table or on the kitchen the bench? Kitchen. On the bench in the kitchen. They'll be there somewhere. Near the bread bin. Ah, yes. Um, so there was um, there was an alpha female in the group, right? Mm-hmm. And at the end of the first week, she's... She was like, I want to I wanna leave my boyfriend and be with you. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake. This is, this is insane. This is completely insane. I had to say to her, I had to say to her, look, just, I'm projecting here. This is not really me, okay? So, um, so the, 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 I said, you'll see the next week. We did a sec- we had a second week for this uh, theater project. And I, I said, the second week, I'm going to take my foot off the gas and take a step back. And you'll Sir see darling? that I'm not. The, hello? Yeah, hello? okay. What's going on? She wants to put the cookie she on the phone. She wants to okay. eat it on the phone. So, so I, <laughs> I said, you've got this, this image of me that's not me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway. Mm-hmm. I tried well, to tell an interesting story from the past, but I can't that was tell a, the story that was an because the kids keep interrupting. <laughs> that was an interesting point of another of say another one of the TED Talks, or was it the same? I think it was another one of the TED Talks. And the point was, fake it until you become it, basically. You know, that if you... That's, that's, a, that's a horrible thing to do. That's absolutely the wrong thing to do. No, but what, what you just... What you just said, right? Like how you acted confident. If that's something that is your goal, if uh, that's something that you would like to become, then acting like it is the way to become it. Because the more you acquire the new habit of of acting self-confident, the the more you will internalize it. And the more you will become self-confident. No? 
Yeah, I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't think. First of all, self improvement is not wrong. Secondly, um, practicing something is not wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. But you want to be. (laughs) What's this letter? Have you drawn a letter over there, darling? Yeah. Well, you have to come and show it to us, that, darling, because no, we can't see it. I, I can see it perfectly. You can? Here. She doesn't need to move anywhere. All right? You, okay. you can see it, too, if you moved your head to the side. Well, right. I did, but I couldn't. Oh, okay. Well, I can see it. She doesn't need to move. Now, I didn't understand if she said ladder or letter. letter. That's the question I was asking. Okay. Letter, yeah? It looks like an... It looks like uh, an L or an H. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, le le le, yeah, or it could be a he he he. It's hard to tell because there's. Uh, 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 you've got to draw two lines going down, darling, and then one line going across. The point is that. You know, sooner or later, every one of us is going to be in a situation where they feel inappropriate, where they feel like, uh, like, I shouldn't really be here, or I don't deserve to be here, or who do I think I am to be here and to do this? And the point was, unless you get on with it and do it, you will never become the person that you are trying to become. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, that's how I live my life. Yes, well, that's basically the point. Yeah, but fake it till you make it bullshit. Because fake it doesn't mean pretend to be someone that you're not. Fake it means... It does, it means trick your mind into believing you're someone you're not. Um, go against the inner voice that is telling you this is, you know... Who do you think you are? <laughs> excuse, excuse me, I did not understand that. I think it's I think it's against going it's it blah. I think it's mm. going against that little voice in your head that keeps voice tries to keep you head. back, that tries to keep you safe, that tells you who do you think you are to do this. Sorry. I was trying to be scared. You weren't listening to oh, me at all. I'm not going to repeat it the third time. Well, the, the the first time I listened carefully and you got it completely wrong. The second time you muddled it up and the third time I uh, got distracted. Anyway, so... <laughs> I'm sorry. So I think if, if you don't do that sometimes, if, if you don't go against it, even though you think this... I shouldn't be here. I'm not enough to be here. Even though you're going to think that sooner or later in a situation. You should go through that. Do it anyway. And even though it feels like you're faking it, because if you don't get the experiences, you will never become it, right? I mean, when I write a blog post, there is a million voices in my head saying, who do you think you are? You know, well, why do you think that people will be interested in this? Who do you think you are to to give advice to people? Who do you think who do you think you are to write about these things? What makes you think that you're right, right? And you've got all these insecurities popping up, but you just have to do it anyway, right? Welcome to my world. You just have to do it anyway. So Whether that's you want, what that's what I d- that's have I or have I not said to you like a thousand times where what you want and what you don't want is irrelevant. There are only there there is only what you must do. So that's if I it. if I want to become a blogger, I I write blogs, right? And I'm thinking th- this is not me. I'm not a blogger. I'm a translator, but I have to do it and do it and do it and do it until I, I become it because that's what I want to become and that's how I become it, right? Why do you want to become a blogger? That was just an example. Oh, okay. Okay. What would be Okay, so that's not a real example then. Is that what you're saying? That's not a real example because even though I like writing blogs, becoming a blogger is not my so, my So Goal so somewhere. what would be a real example for you? 
Let's make it practical. A real example for me would be becoming a writer. And being a blogger doesn't take you in that direction? It does. That's why I'm saying it. it's just a step on the... It's just practicing writing, basically. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a pro procrastination thing, actually. To a certain extent. Because on well, there's a jump there. What's yeah, I know. Procrastination <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm writing, but I don't consider my writing to be as serious as it would be if I was writing a book, a real thing, something real that I really want to write. I mean, the blog is real, obviously, but it's just little bits and pieces, right? It's not a, it's not a big thing. So. Well, you know, the principle <coughs> is that if you write a blog post every day, at the end of the year, you've got a book. That's the principle. Oh, well, that's bullshit. Because, well, yes, you would have a book if you put all the blog posts together, but it wouldn't make that much of a coherent unit, you know. I'm well, talking about... Well, if you planned it from the beginning like that, <coughs> where you were going and why you were writing? That's not, that's not really what I want to do, though. That's, that's, it's, that is not, that's just not what I want to do. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. So That's not how I can... So what is it that together. you want to do? I do want to blog, to practice my writing, practice my style, to put down my ideas, to put down my ideas, <coughs> sorry, to come back later. But when I'm writing a book, I want to write it as a separate project because I think that um, it needs more coherence than just a set of blog posts. And I cannot get that coherence if I think about it as, you know, one bit here, the next bit, the next bit, the next bit. I need to think about it as a, as a, as a unit, as a single thing. And and when I think about it as a th single thing, right? You get, you, you can split it up. And offer it as 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 bits. We all work in different ways, so I understand yeah. the d I understand the idea that that's what works for you. I don't think that would be how other people would best do it, but uh, I understand it's not time effective, and uh, I'd like to just you know it's it's something in my head. Let's not let's not overanalyze it right now. I don't want to overanalyze it right now. <laughs> you don't want to overanalyze it because it's not clear. Yes, exactly. So, let's not. Don't want to talk about it. No, change the subject. No, it's like wherever the thing is that you least want to talk about, that's where you most need to go. Good. That's absolutely right. And I know that from my one-to-one -one work with clients, right? Okay. I know that if ever we touch upon something and the person says, I don't want to talk about it, I know that we'll never get anywhere until we talk about it. Because that one block blocks everything. Not mm -hmm. just that one thing, but everything. You know, nothing... The people are looking for flow. Right? Sorry. People are... <laughs> some, some kind of piano thing going on over there. Um, people are looking for flow. Mm -hmm. And if you've got just one block, you'll never find flow. You'll never find it at all. Yeah. So I know that from, from my communication um, with clients, that um, the moment they're like, I don't really want to talk about that. Um, you know, From extreme examples like the death of somebody, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want to talk about that because it's emotionally painful. Well, you need to get the pain out, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you, you need to talk about it. Um, so e that works in uh, plans as well. If there's something that someone's doing and they're like, yeah, no, well, I just don't want to talk about that. Well, that's a sign that you're you, afraid of it. Yeah, that's a sign that you know that there's something there that, you know, it's like, I don't want to open that box because there's a fire breathing dragon in it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and right now, I don't want to fight the fire breathing dragon. It's like, well, you better do it now because it's it's just gonna get it's get worse I suppose become bigger it's just gonna become um, an, an issue hungrier <laughs> yeah it's become an issue that you drag around with you wherever you go Dra it's, it, hence the word drag on 
<laughs> well, 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 no. But <laughs> <laughs> never mind. But uh, it's a nice I'm, connection I'm, I'm, anyway. Zora, <laughs> spin her around. I'm sure there's Please. lots of language jokes connected with that. Anyway, um, principles to live by is what we've again, been looking still. at. Again, still. Well, you're you're quite welcome to bring any topic to the table that you'd like to bring to the table. No, 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 I'm quite happy. Oh, no, no complete <laughs> reversal. I'm not complaining, I just asked. Com I just, it wasn't a negative question, I just asked, okay? Uh, you you tone, perceived tone, my question tone, as a criticism. Tone, tone, shall we, shall we, after we finish today, shall we play it back and look at the tone and the way yes. in which that was presented? Yes, okay. because... From my point of view, the toad was expressing surprise. Nothing else. Nothing negative. Mm. Okay, okay. And you and you reacted like I was criticizing. Uh, it might be a cultural difference. Surprise is very often mistaken for criticism by British people. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. This is a British thing. See, where okay. where where in some countries like surprise is surprise. Surprise in Britain often means means criti in, in to to British cultures often means criticism. Okay. So that okay. could be a cultural thing going on there. It's like the word adequate. We had a we had a discussion about the word adequate. Remember? No. And for me, adequate was a neutral word. Okay. You know, something expressing something is adequate means. Basic, it's basic, basic positive because it means that something fits the situation. And you said that it's negative. Oh, it's negative, definitely negative. Ad <laughs> it's adequate means it's it, it's okay, but things could be better. Well, for me, adequate means for me and other Slovak people, adequate means this is appropriate for the situation. It fits the situation well. Moja <laughs> bit. So mm. yeah, obviously there's a lot of cultural differences mm -hmm. when it comes to understanding and then misunderstandings happen the cook darling the cookies are next to the bread we'll go get a cookie for you your little sister shoopity doopity doo shoopity doopity doo uh, can you move a bit slower <laughs> no <laughs> be going backwards <laughs> you didn't you no? didn't uh, you didn't find the movie zootropolis that I mentioned this. It's a genius movie. Uh, there's I did. this. You did? It's. I've got it. Yeah. Yeah. There's this animal there. Uh, that, I couldn't put it on the disc because the disc is cool. frozen, broken. Okay. I don't know what. You it, can put it on the other one. What is wrong with it? Right. Sorry. You can put it on the other one, right? I could if it wasn't full of uh, super wine octonauts. <laughs> Right. Anyway, so uh, yeah, there's this, there's this sloth in the movie. <laughs> Good afternoon, Rado. How's it going? Hi. I missed our conversation this morning. Okay. And there's there is the sloth, and he's moving like really slowly, like painfully slowly, right? In the movie, and uh, it's just like like Will. So funny. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <sighs> like a snowflake falling from the sky. Except they're not painful, right? Like well, like well. We were actually oh, making like a snowflake at all. <laughs> we actually made it into a little internal joke, me and Will, because when he was being really slow, I just said sloth, and then he just slowed down even more. <laughs> <laughs> well, he and does laughed. That. He does that. He does that. He goes slower and slower and slower, and I go slower and slower, and then I stop, and he goes, "Why have you stopped? <laughs> stop because you're not moving." <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, that uh, happens all the time, yeah. Right, principles to live by. Okay. Um, well, we Is we that Rado that, that gave us the washing pattern? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, it's it's wonderful, it smells really nice. It does it? Yeah, it smells, it smells of lavender. It's one of my favorite songs. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, that's really nice. Thanks. Penny for your thoughts, my dear. Well, that Penny one. for your thoughts, my dear. I thought that I thought I the song was called you. "Smells of Lavender." No, it's just called "Lavender." Okay, lavender. lavender read the green, uh, lavender blue. Penny for your thing. thoughts, my dear. Read the thing, because I don't have my glasses on, so I can't. I will. Um, can I say something not related to this at all? No. We need to do something about all the leaves that have fallen off the over there. <laughs> I know, 
I keep walking past them? Saying that to myself. <laughs> my hands are always full of something, and I'm thinking, I'll just put this down and go pick them up, and then something Light else. Lightsabers, happens. perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, principles to live by. What we're going to do is go through a few principles, try to l relate them to parenting, and um, probably not make any sense at Whose all. principles are these? Mike Cernovich. Okay. Who's he? Who's he? Who's he? He's not, who? Not important. Okay. Right. Um, a man with a pair of heavy steel things. A man with a bag. At the center. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or every gypsy that walks past. <laughs> right. They have bags. They have these repurposed baby prams full of recycling. They do. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Must be hell trying to push that through the snow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, principles to live by. Here we go. Are you ready? Yes. Are you sure you're ready? I was born ready. <laughs> funny, funny, funny person. Okay. Read old books. That's it. Read old books? Yes. I do that all the time. Well, when I have time. Obviously. It's not about you. It's about general principles for life for everybody. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Read old books. They're great. Uh, I like old books because <laughs> they <laughs> it's smell like they really they bad smell marketing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, no, because they give you a very, very strange kind of perspective on things. You know, reading about all the social... Um, relationships in the past mm -hmm. just just give you perspective on everything well i think it's um, for me about continuity of ideas mm -hmm. social media and the news changes and moves so quickly it's very hard to find any consistently reliable or informative reality mm -hmm. so from books, what you get is the ability to focus on an idea for a longer period of time and analyze it. Historical novels. I love historical novels because... They're historical. Yes. No, because they give you um, a humanized <laughs> view on the historical things that happened in the history. Do you You're like talking about like sort of a Hemingway's so view of war or something like that. For example, or this is a Russian book that I read. I can't remember what it was. But, uh, but it, you know, just the story of a family, but it gave you the, the individual's view of Russian Revolution. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's so important because... When you read history books, it's very easy to, you know, just see, okay, this what happened, those years, this happened, those years, this happened, those years, but it's dehumanized. You have no idea what those what those people were feeling. You you and you if you can't put yourself into the shoes of the people that lived in that time, yeah. how can you understand what you're reading about. How yeah, can you understand the history? Names and numbers is not history. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, you know, what people learn. People learn names and numbers. That's not history. And you read about some war somewhere and you're like, okay, well, this country attacked that country and that country decided that they're going to, uh, that they're going to collaborate and you're thinking, oh, well, fuckers, right? They could have fought. And you have no idea what happened. You have no idea what the few people were feeling, what the situation really was for them, what, you know, how, well, anything. You don't know anything. You just, you just see, like, a, a, a list of things that happened in time. But the historical novels give you the, um, the emotion of it all, which is, which is what moves Right, which is what moves people and moves masses and, and stands behind revolutions and things. <coughs> I like the way that Will reads before he goes to bed. Yeah, yeah, it's his routine. It's nice, I like it's that. Bedtime routine. It's a good routine. Yeah. Right, moving on, next. Um, seek meaning and fulfillment in life. Do not seek pleasure. Seek meaning and fulfillment in life. Do not seek pleasure. That's what I said. 
I'm trying to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> well, pleasure is this, uh, this this carrot which is used by modern culture as the aim of everything is to create pleasure and be happy, but that happiness never lasts. Yeah, so people never feel fulfilled. I think it, when you when you find meaning and fulfillment, it gives you immense pleasure. You know, so I think seeking fulfillment and it's about you know there's pleasure that is superficial, like I'm going to have this cookie, right? But there is a deeper kind of pleasure <laughs> that you get from, say, big a, cookies. A contract. <laughs> <laughs> in contrast to that, uh, that you get from staying healthy and strong, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, it's it's like that. I mean, yes, there is pleasure in staying in bed, but there is a larger, pl pl larger pleasure. <laughs> it's really hard to say that. <laughs> say that five times really quickly. In getting up early dragging your arse out of bed, going through this horrible experience of, 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 I really don't want to be, you know, out here. And then getting things done. And after you get things done, you feel fulfilled, you feel better, you feel like a, like a worthy person. And the, the, the pleasure is three times as big. So I think pleasure doesn't stand in opposition to meaning and fulfillment. I think it's a direct consequence. There, mm. there, there can be superficial pleasures that distract you from meaning and fulfillment. But if you, I don't know. I, I, I sort of see. I sort of, I sort of see pleasure as always <coughs> a distraction. From well, the aim of life is not for things to be pleasurable or to seek pleasure. Yes, I you can have see it as a fun at certain points in time, but mm, um, I see I see pleasure as a as a as a reward as a as a why should natural get consequence. Rewards? Why should people get rewards? It's a natural consequence. Why? Why do you do anything? What's the motivation of doing? What's the incentive? You al you always say with kids, incentivize, give them incentive. And the incentive you always give them is some kind of pleasure, isn't it? We'll tidy up your room and then you can play the computer game for 10 minutes. That's pleasure. I think pleasure is the natural consequence of finding no, meaning and fulfillment. I think, no, I see, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think it is pleasure. What is it? The game is a quest and a challenge. It's not specifically a pleasure. If he likes doing it, it's pleasure. Anything that you like doing is pleasure. Mm, I, I think there's a difference in purpose there. I think that pleasure very rarely has a greater purpose maybe never has a greater purpose whereas other things in life do have some 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 kinds of purpose i mean take the take no, take, take the example of a picture of dorian gray mm -hmm. right okay the the man who seeks se seeks pleasure mm -hmm. as 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 his main goal in life and you know as a result he became engulfed in his own fantasy world yes but i you're not listening to what i'm saying sorry no i was speaking actually. i'm I'm, tr I'm trying to i'm trying to say that pleasure is not a goal but a natural consequence i think for a lot of people pleasure is their goal Yes. I well, think for a lot of young people in the modern world today, pleasure is their goal. Yes, it yes, the, but but I I've, I've qualified at the beginning that there is superficial, you know, pleasure that you take as a goal, like oh, I'm going to do some smoochy smoochy with this with this lady over here just to have some pleasure, right? <laughs> and then. <laughs> what did you say? You're going to make a smoothie? Or what, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That's the wrong type of pleasure. Right? And then there is pleasure that Smoochie you... Smoochie is the wrong kind of pleasure. Yeah, shut up. No, I'm just repeating what you're saying. 
<laughs> I'm saying pleasure for the sake of pleasure. Is the are you know you got me all mixed up. <laughs> the superficial pleasure that you seek for the sake of just having pleasure is the wrong kind of pleasure. The right kind of pleasure is the pleasure that you derive from doing something meaningful, something true, something something that makes sense and fulfills you and, and, and helps others and so on. Smoochie smoochie is cool. I don't have a problem with smoochie smoochie. But you have to uh, it has to be more than just that. Right. It has to be more than smoochie smoochie. Yes. <laughs> it has to be a meaningful smoochie smoochie. Smoochie smoochie that's smoochie. Smoochie smoochie. <laughs> no, you have to you have to have deep feelings for the person. You have to feel fulfilled with each other. You have to you know, it's 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 not just about the smoochie smoochie because that's the superficial pleasure. But it's just about the smoochie smoochie. You have to go deeper, baby. Deeper. Right. Okay, well, can we move on? <laughs> okay. Can we move on? Deep, deeper connectedness is, is what I meant. Yes, absolutely. Right, right. okay. Just, just to be clear. On the... Uh, Western Front? Metaphysical levels. <laughs> perhaps, <sighs> perhaps. Okay. Um, moving on. Uh, life without community makes little sense. What does it mean? What does it mean? Life without community. Yeah, it means you can't get through life alone. You, oh need, no. con you need connection. Well, what is the meaning of your life? What is the fulfillment of your life if not, if not work for a certain kind of community? I mean, you can't just work for yourself. Right, what well, you can you have no what kind of meaning do you have? I mean, well, I any meaning for work that you do gives something to to people or a community or 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 somebody else. No. Um, Even artists, when they create their arts, are not are not making it for themselves. Well, I think work is about legacy. That's the true meaning of work. It's about what you leave behind you for other people. You either yeah, but you, you either you either leave something that other people can build on, or a giant fucking mess they have to clean up. Yes, but uh, yes, but the legacy doesn't have to be in the future. It can happen at, in the present, obviously. You're building it right now. Yeah. Because because you can only do things in the now. Yes, but what I'm saying is. You can help people in the now, right? You there's, can a, there's a kid who looks like a zombie. What is it? What happens to be the problem, Will? Oh dear. What's he talking about? About his battery on his tablet. Okay, well that's great, Will. Can we deal with that when we're finished? Thank you very much for sharing that with us. That's much appreciated. Mm, yeah. Do you need me to put it on the charger for you, or did you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Turn it off and leave it. Give it some rest. The problem is not going to be solved here and now. Okay. Okay. The problem is not going to be solved here and now. Thank we'll you very much it. for sharing that with us. We appreciate that. We'll deal with that. Thank you, Will. We will leave it for now and we'll deal with it later. Okay. Come and watch Delgo with the kids. Mm. The girls. Mm. Right. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say about community? Um. <laughs> no. The point is that going on yes, you do need community. So obviously, nobody, nobody's an island. Well, we're all islands. Nobody's an island. We're all islands. We're not all islands. Some of us are island chains. <laughs> <laughs> nobody. Tribute, tribute that to Nick Hornby in uh, about a boy. Nobody's an island. So we're all islands. you have to. <laughs> You can't. 
live. I am a rock. Without I am an, uh, uh, a certain type of community. I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yes, because the uh, community gives you connections. And connections give you... I can I can imagine a situation where people actually have to apply this as their principle to remind themselves on it because um, if you imagine a, like a corporate setting, right? You're where, aware, are you aware of what's going on over yes, there? Yes, yes, I'm okay. aware that okay. Sora is bandaging Jasmine's foot with toilet paper. Um, I imagine that in a corporate setting, when you work in an office, you can you can actually get to a state where you live without a community but in any <laughs> in any other environment I imagine it's really difficult to do that because because everybody does work or something in a, co- in a corporate level when you just do a little office job and you lose the sight of what you're doing it for you just fulfill the orders right that gets you disconnected but when you know what you're doing who you're doing it for then you can't really lose sight of community, can you? Oh, uh, that's a very good point. I mean, if you look at it from a parenting perspective, right? I mean, if you're doing things for your kids, then hopefully what benefits your kids has some benefit within the community at the same time. It wouldn't be much sense to 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 give your kids a benefit that would not benefit them within the community. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you put your work that you do for your kids out there, for example, in a blog post or whatever else, right? Mm-hmm. Then, uh, then you can just kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay, here's a strange one for you. Mm-hmm. Breathe properly. I'm supposed to live by breathe properly. That's an interesting one. My mom told me a story once about her colleague when she worked in a certain school, and she, she stopped said breathing that and died. No, <laughs> she said that her colleague suffered migraines. Mm-hmm. She said she suffered severe migraines that would just come just like that. And uh, my mom said that you know they were trying to help her. They were suggesting you know things that could help, and and my mom just just out of the blue just told her you know breathe <laughs> she said breathe start she's like start breathing and uh she said that when the woman focused on her breath you know realized that that she gets a migraine when in situations when you know she's stressed and she doesn't breathe properly so okay. so breathing actually helped her relieve her headache so i think Proper breathing is important, yes, and uh, it can change your entire, not not just physical, but your entire emotional state as well. When you're angry, when you're stressed, just focusing on the breath. I mean, that's what meditation is based on, isn't it? And a lot of meditation practices, they tell you, you know, focus on your breath, because it's, it's the thing at hand that you can use to refocus. Well, yeah, according to a lot of scientific studies, you can't be afraid if you remain in control of your breath, basically. Because if your breath remains even, that means you are in control. I'm not sure I agree with that, because I'm a very fearful person, and I can be afraid even when I'm in control of my breath, but but it definitely helps. It's something to be aware of, at least. Yes, for, absolutely. For people, which yes. is, which is very uh, important. Ja- Jazzy, you're wasting the toilet paper. She's she's unraveling the toilet roll across and the floor. And re-raveling it. Well, that's what kids love arms. doing. I know, I know, they love it. It's just. It, she's she's enjoying it so much. It seems a shame to. Uh, it's like a giant snowball, isn't it, Jazz? <laughs> It is. And what do we what do we do with snowballs? Mm. I just love the toilet paper wars. They do that like once a month. Once in a month one of them gets a hold of a toilet roll and then it's just like <laughs> toilet explosion. Toilet paper explosion. Well yes, obviously. You need to get to try it. <laughs> okay. Sorry, that would be nasty. With a big T at the end. Right. There we go. 
Let's do let's do one or two more. Okay. Uh, principles to live by. Accept that you can't change others. Understand this and move on quickly. That is so hard. That is so hard. And in, in especially if you're a parent trying to shape your kids. Oh yeah. Yes, absolutely. In parenting it's 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 super difficult because because we tend to believe uh, that that 100% of our children can be shaped and modeled and that everything depends on our parenting skills and that everything, that their entire future basically is written by us. Uh, and, you, and you tend to think, wait, what did I do to cause my child to turn out this way right i mean your child misbehaves or well, misbehaves your child um expresses their opinion their very strong opinion and you're thinking where have i made a mistake what have i done wrong and you don't realize that they're not your canvas to paint they're not your little statue to create i mean you have a huge influence on them but you have to respect that they are an individual person. And just like in relationship, uh, in a romantic relationship or in friendship, you can't change the person. You can love them, you can accept them, or you can, uh, you know, there are always going to be things that you cannot identify with, but you can accept them as a part of that person. Or if it's to if it's something that you can't accept then you just you just let go right um with kids it's a bit more a bit more challenging because you can't just let go right <laughs> so but we are we are here to but i don't know anybody i don't know any parent who wouldn't love their child with with everything they have right i know that there are behaviors that are challenging uh, but I understand them as as calling for help, you know, as, as, as areas that the kids need help with. Very often the kids cry for help as the parents cry for help. Yes, that's a good point. That's a good point. Because they just reflect. Very often they reflect what, what we're doing. But, um, yeah... Yeah, the, the, the point is we have to learn to distinguish what is my child's personality, what is their unique part of themselves, and what is just a behavior that is a, that is a call for help or what is a communication problem that they need help with, you know, to, to learn how to communicate properly. So, so uh, if your child is, you know, stubborn and doesn't listen then then um, and, and is bossy then then celebrate their leadership skills and help them learn how to communicate them properly right mm -hmm. absolutely so. jazzy could i have that please because one toilet roll covering the whole room is enough i think can you play with the one that you've already unraveled that's it unraveled unentangled and could you give the second one to me please no. jazzy daddy needs a tissue can you give it to him? No, that's just going to cause her to unravel it even more. That, that's not going to work. Where? Oh, bless you. Okay. Oh, I just think a bit. I think Can I'm I have a big? All of it. Can I have the big one? Because you can't do the same thing again, darling. Because because it's going to be in a mess, and we need the toilet paper for when people go to the toilet. Actually. It's not so that it can be wasted. What if uh, you need to pee? Yeah, what are you going to use then? What if there's no paper for anybody? <laughs> <laughs> You're faking a sneeze over there, little girl. You're faking a sneeze. Mm. Mm. <gasps> Jasmine, go give Zora a toilet roll. She needs it. Yeah, because she's on the she toilet. She just peed. She's on the toilet. Go quickly. Go save her. <laughs> Quickly, yes. this is whole thing. <laughs> it's the the um, super superheroes of slow motion. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. No yawning on the podcast. Sorry. Oh my gosh! Did you save the day? 
Oh. Well done, darling. Well, I went to sleep at three o'clock last night, so I'm sorry if I'm not as fresh as a freaking butterfly. Daisy, Daisy, fresh as a daisy. Right, there we go. Yes, um, accepting you can't change others is uh, I it's, it's pretty that important. Last night, <laughs> changing yourself is hard. Changing others is impossible. Absolutely. Um, so many marriages would be much happier if they realized that. <laughs> well, it's the there's so much frustration coming out of the fact that the man can't change the woman and the woman can't change the man and they're just not happy and they keep expecting well, the other one to change and they well, just won't change. The deciding factor <laughs> is always the fact that second marriages are less successful than first marriages. And this shows that if you didn't make the right choice the first time, you're not going to get it right the second time either. Because you're just it's perpetuating the same mistake. Yeah, because and you're it's not, not prepared. about... I'm not finished. Sorry. You're talking right over the top of me there. Sorry. And you're not prepared to put in the time to work it out. Yes, because, no, because, because a lot of people don't... Because this is the, the basic stuff that a lot of people doesn't realize, that... <laughs> you can't change others and that the, there is not going to be anyone on the planet that that will be perfect for you with like no flaws mm -hmm. right so there's always going to be something and either you are willing to love the person with whatever they come with mm -hmm. or or you don't <laughs> and and if you if you expect you know that this 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 guy is great. If only he didn't do that. And if you if you marry them and then expect them to change, that's just silly. Because they're not going to. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like testing a product and it's a bit broken, and then buying the product thinking that the product's going to get fixed once you've broken it. Once it once it's already broken. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. Yes, but I wouldn't go as far as, as, as finding a broken product. It can just it can just be a dress that is blue well, and you buy it and expect it to turn green magically. That's right? a, that's <laughs> probably a better example. But I was by, by broken I mean it just nobody's it's, perfect. Yeah, that's it doesn't I mean. it doesn't fit your expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then thinking that that by investing more time and more money that it's going to change and it's going to fit your expectations is uh, is is not going to solve the problem because it's it it doesn't deal with the, any the, of the, the core issues. The problem is not in that person. That person is not the problem. They didn't create the problem. It's your problem. You created the problem when you chose someone that you didn't want to choose in the first place, right? <laughs> there so. you go. Two done. Point. Go. Point. Point said. Right. Um, we covered a few principles. Um, we talked about uh, change in people. We talked about breathing. We talked about community. We talked about meaning, fulfillment, pleasure, and we talked about books as well. So hopefully that will give you out there something to chew on. If you'd like more information about what we do on the practical, <laughs> the picture was okay. Super. That's good. Well done. Um, if you'd like more information about what we do. <laughs> Go, 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 it's darling. Go, the go, Academy go. Of it's language. here. Jazzy, it's the it's Academy here. of Language Therapy Fulting. and Life Coaching on YouTube and Facebook. You can follow me on Facebook under the name okay. Graham William Hendry. And check uh, you out can 21. You just I'm going to talk over you because I have to go and in, in, in help Jasmine. She needs to go to the toilet. So check out 21centurymom.com uh, and check out our amazing parenting video series as well that you will find on my website and you will find it on my Facebook and you will find it on G's YouTube channel so dun, 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 thank you very much for listening dun, 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 I have to run dun. and he's going to say bye bye for me because I'm what? disconnecting no, the just wait. no we just stop playing with the fucking cables oh I have gosh. to help Jasmine because she needs to pee and she doesn't want to use the potty ok can you wait 5 seconds ask Jazz thank you very much you just rambled on for two minutes saying you got no time, okay? And you can't wait five more seconds. Right. So, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And um, we'll be back again very soon with another debate, argument, topic, whatever, wherever, whenever. There we go. Does that make sense? Almost. <laughs> Almost. That's good enough for me. TTFN. Bye.
Um, didn't, did it? Maybe? Did Stop. now. Could have done, perhaps. <laughs> Something's going round and round and round and round and round. Appears to be finished. There we go. Another one is done. 